Hey guys, Pogo here. I know the game jam is over, but there was a request to show how to render text uh, in the RPG game. So I'm going to uh, make this video to show you, how, first of all, how to render text, then how to change aspects of it, like the um, font, the uh, type, like, you know, bold italicized, the size, the color, and how to, you know, align it and center it and whatever. So, um, you're going to want to open up the GUI class and go to this paint component. Now, remember, this method is automatically called by swing when I call repaint. So, this is going to keep happening, and this is where the, um, the graphics and everything are painted. So, this is where we can actually add our own things. So, right now, we're just, you know calling down here this g.drawImage, which will draw different images that we want of the tiles, but I can show you how to draw other things using the same graphics class. So we want to go under where it says draw tiles for above, because um, we want to draw everything, and then we want the text to appear above that. So after everything's already been drawn, then we want to draw the text. So if you type in g. you'll notice that there are a ton of methods that come up. And if you start typing in draw, you'll notice that... Um, there are a bunch of interesting methods that uh, show up, uh, you know, the draw image that we've already used. But then for pretty much any shape you could imagine, a rectangle, a round rectangle, um, you know, polygons, ovals, or circles, lines, um, arcs, 3D rectangles. And also if you do fill, then you'll notice that there are a bunch of other methods. Uh, we're just going to be focusing on text. But if you wanted to actually draw, like, let's say, squares or circles, instead of uh, having to have images in, you know, your resources folder and then read them in, you could actually do, like, g.fillrect. You give it the x position, the y position, the width, and the height of the rectangle, and then it'll automatically create, uh, it'll draw on a rectangle. So that's helpful. But what we want to do is say g.drawString. And you'll see that uh, there are two methods. The one that we care about is this draw string that takes the string x and y. So we can go ahead and give it a string. And uh, for this, I'm just going to you know manually have this written in here. You could like store a list of strings to draw on, or have a method that will set like store a current string and then have a method that changes it. So if you wanted to you know, be able to set the string that's being drawn somewhere or just keep a bunch of strings that you want to draw. Maybe your game has some kind of a score or you want to display something else. You could do it like this. Then as far as the X and the Y for now, let's go ahead and do 0, 0. So I'm going to go ahead and start the game. And let's see uh, what happens. Let's see if it works. Alright, so it does work. You can see it's a little bit cut off, so let's move this down a little bit. Let's just put it at 50-50 so it'll definitely be in and easily visible. So let's just move it to 50-50. And as you can see, it does say testing. It's rather small and it's in a strange little font, but it is there and it's also in black. So that is how you would go about drawing the strings. I'm just going to do it at 75-75 so it doesn't overlap with that um, NPC up in the corner, but if I do it, if I run it, then you will notice that it does uh, work and it renders it. Now, if you want to have more control over this, I'm going to show you how to do that. If you go ahead and do G dot and then set, you'll notice that there are a bunch of methods here. The two that you would be interested in are set color and set font. Set, uh, set color controls the color that's used for writing the text or if you call you know draw or fill for a shape it'll use this color here to do it you can change this multiple times so you could set it to be blue draw one square set it to be red and then draw another square if you wanted uh, but here let's say we want the text to be uh, in color dot um, let's just say white for this since we have like that green background and it might be easier to see in white so if I go ahead and run it now uh, you'll see that the text is now white and it's much 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 easier to see so that is how you would go about changing the color remember this applies if I were to go to draw a square then it would be outlined in white or if I went to fill in a square or a rectangle really then it would be filled in with this white color and you can of course change it as many times as you want uh, 
or you could even do something with like you know generating a random color but uh, that is how you would uh, set the color now if you want to change the font you will notice that there's a set font method which takes an instance of the font class I'm going to show you how to use that we want to go ahead and use the font constructor and there are two um, ways that you could instantiate a font. The first is by using a font that's already built in, or the second is you could actually bundle a font in this resources folder. If you found a cool font that you liked, you could download it in like TTF or OTF or whatever the formats are for the, um, I guess TTF is true type font or there's another one. I think OTF might be open type font. Whatever font you get, I think that a bunch of them are compatible with Java. You can look that up. But uh, if you put in your resources folder and then you can use like the resource manager to load it in then you can do that if we take a look at font you can see all of the different uh, things that it will take in we're going to be using the string int and int um, but you can use uh, I think I guess the one with the file would go ahead and actually uh, load it in from a file if you guys are really interested in that I have done it before in a different project so I could um, show you but uh, for now, we're just going to use the string int and int. So the first argument is, um, if we're using that constructor, is the actual font that we want to use. And if you do font dot, you'll notice that there are already a bunch of things to find. Uh, we're going to go ahead and use sans serif. There's also serif and monospaced. I don't think dialog and dialog input might also be fonts, but I'm not completely sure. And, uh... Oh, I see. So you would actually, if you wanted to create a font, I guess you would use this static create font method um, if you wanted to get it from a file. So anyways, we're going to use sans serif. Now uh, the next parameter is the um, type or the uh, attributes of the font. So if you wanted to make it bold or italicized or you know whatever, in this case I'm just going to make it plain because you know we don't really need it to be bolded or italicized or you know we could just for fun we'll make it italic then after that it takes in the size so let's do 18 so it'll be bigger I think the default is like 8 10 or 12 somewhere around there but let's just make it size 18 now let's give it a try alright so as you can see the font or the text testing is now much bigger and it's in italics the italics don't really look great with that font but uh, it is uh, size 18 and in italics so I believe that's all that we need to cover that's um, you know drawing a string uh, at a at X and Y position you can set the color and set the font the one thing that I just remembered that I wanted to do is I can show you how to actually center this in the screen you could manually figure out exactly how long the testing thing is and figure out exactly how long everything is and then do it like that but um, we're not going to do it like that we can actually uh, do it inside of the program so that you could just copy and paste the X and Y values it will write and it'll automatically work for any string so the way that you would calculate the center is you would take one half of the or for the X. You would take one half of the width of the frame and then you would take uh, one half of the width of the word testing and then that would put it in the center. For the Y it's just height and uh, the what's it called? The, uh, uh, the height of the text I guess. So let's just go ahead and we can do so for this we want to do um, frame.getInstance.getWidth so that'll return the width divided by 2 and I'm just going to put these in parentheses just so we can easily keep track. Then we're going to add, and now if you do g.getFontMetrics, this will return an instance of font metrics for the current font. Font metrics just contains a bunch of methods that give you information about the current font that you're working with. So in this case, the current font is sans serif italic size 18. So this, all these methods pertain to that particular font. And I can... Um, get some information about the font through this. So um, in this case we can go ahead and do, if we want to get the width we can do um, we can do the string width method and th in this case it would be testing and we want to divide that by two so I'll put that in parentheses and then for this one we want to do um, frame.getInstance.getHeight divided by two plus g.getFontMetrics.getHeight. You don't need to give it a string because the height is uh, 
I, I think it's just like whatever the highest character is, the height of the highest character. Uh, there's no string height method or anything, so that's what we'll use. And then we're going to just divide that by 2 as well. So let's just um, kind of collapse this a little bit better so that uh, it's not a ginormous blob. And that should be a little bit easier to read. Let's see if it actually will center it correctly. Okay, so it's a little bit off. Let's take a look. It looks like the x value is the problem. Hmm. So we're getting the width of the frame, we're dividing it by 2, and then we're adding the string width divided by 2. Let me think about that. I think that um, if we divide the width by 2, then that will give us the exact center. If we want to center the text, then we're getting the width of the text and dividing it by 2. So it would then do that. Let's just, um, I'm just going to do a little bit of experimentation and see if we can figure this out. Uh, if you want to skip ahead, no hard feelings. But, um, let's put that in parentheses as well. I, it looks like the height is working fine, uh, but this we wanted to do the string with get font metrics. It might have, and I doubt it, but it might have something to do with the fact that we're changing the size. So it's not quite centering it, it's getting it a bit off. But, um, I will take a look at it and see if I can figure it out, but that's more or less how you would do it. And uh, I will push this to the RPG29 GitHub repository, uh, which you can find in the description of this video. So that's all for this video. It was um, requested that I show how to draw text. I gave a really, really quick answer as a comment, just graphics and the draw string method that takes a uh, string, an X and a Y. But I just wanted to show you how to do it within the code, and then also how to set, set the color and set the font. And uh, that's pretty much all you could possibly do with drawing strings in programs. So that's all for this video. As always, subscribe if you want to see more. Uh, comment with what you want to learn. If you like this video, click the like button, and I will see you guys soon. Bye.